Welcome, foolish mortals, to another episode of the Hitchhiking Host Show. We are your ghost hosts, Wes. And Jen. But we hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving out there and a, and didn't get trampled on Black Friday like we <laughs> like we predicted. Um, we're still here, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> if, if we're not, then we didn't make it to the Thanksgiving weekend. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, we're from the future. So... <laughs> Anyway, uh, that made no sense. <laughs> so, this week we're going to do something a little special. Uh, back in our Halloween episode, remember that? Yeah. We did a special top five episode, and we are going to do yet another top five uh, little segment here. Uh, this time it's going to be our top five uh, Walt Disney World bucket list restaurants. And that means... Restaurants we have yet to eat at at Walt Disney World. So ones we have eaten at will not be included. In my top five, I have a couple different ones. For number five, I would say Victorian Alberts. But mostly I just want to see what the hype is about. And I know everyone talks about sitting at the chef's table with like the personally prepared menus. I just want to experience it once to say I did. So, I won't say too much more because I know Wes will have more to say about it. Well, you just spoiled that I have it on my list. <laughs> well, that's okay. Number four would be La Hacienda. I have been to, and I always butcher the name, so I say it as English as I can. It's the San Angel, San Angel Inn in Mexico. I have been to that one. <laughs> but I want to go to La Hacienda. I like the Mexican food, and I think it would be really pretty to watch the um, uh, Illuminations while sitting in the restaurant. Number three is Whispering Canyon Cafe. I don't know why, but I've never been there. It's always on my list to go. Um, hopefully, I will go. Number two is Via Napoli, because it can't be good Italian food. And that's coming from somebody with an Italian family. And number one, of course, and I know, well, I won't spoil it, but number one, of course, is Ohana. I... I want to go there so bad more than anywhere else I want to go to Ohana I just I want to see the experience I want to taste I just I want to go I want to go and that's my top five okay <laughs> so go ahead uh, I have a few of those on my list as well <laughs> um number five is Victoria and Albert's at the Grand Floridian what just the way? Because- just because it sounds like such a crazy experience. <laughs> and I, I just sort of want to see what, what happens here. Dinner itself is $125 right off the bat. That's from a, a guidebook 12, so chances are it probably even has more. And uh, if you want wine pairings, it's $185 per person. Um, there's only two seatings nightly. <laughs> there's only 18 tables. <laughs> So you really have to, it's like, if you want reservations here, you have to do it like definitely like more than a, like about a year in advance, probably. <laughs> if they allow it that, well, at least six months. Don't allow kids. Yeah, you have to be a certain age. Um, the menu changes daily. Uh, <laughs> there's a harpist and a violinist. <laughs> um the chef's table that Jen said I'm talking about includes a toast from the chef himself and a personal menu. That, <laughs> that just sounds nuts to me. That and funny. Uh, yeah, I don't know that I would want to spend all that money, but it's it's two dining credits, by the way, if you're on the dining plan. I'm shocked it's not three. <laughs> but uh, that would definitely be something interesting to try. It was for a special occasion, though. Yeah, yeah, true. But yeah, that that that's just curiosity more than anything. Why that's on my top five. Yes. Um, number four, Tutto Italia in Italy. Um, just because I'm a fan of Italian food, and other than that ravioli I had at the food and wine festival, I've never eaten anything in the Italy pavilion. Uh, it's got to be. You think it's got to be good. <laughs> um, number three, and this one's a little different. Uh, Boma in the Animal Kingdom Lodge. 
I've never actually been in the Animal Kingdom Lodge. I definitely want to check that out someday. See all the animals outside. And I've heard Boma is a banging buffet. So, uh, so I definitely want to check out Boma sometime. I've heard the food is wonderful. Uh, number two, uh, the Be Our Guest restaurant at the Magic Kingdom. I ah, yes, I have yet to go there. So um, that's definitely on my list. Um, I've heard the food is decent and pretty good um, from different sources. Um, I can personally and, attest that it is. Yes, I just would like to go in. It, it sort of, it didn't kill me, but it was a pain and a nuisance that I was right outside of the gates and couldn't go in and just like check it out. <laughs> hmm? It's a tease. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I have a feeling the next trip I'm getting it, I'm getting into one of these at least. But I'm I think I'm uh, hopefully I can get into be our guest. Um, and number one, I will make the sound <laughs> for it. Everyone knows what I'm, what I'm talking about. Oh, Ohana's. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't know the story, watch the trip report. But um, it's one of my favorite highlights. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I just my favorite hotel is the Polynesian, and mm -hmm. I really just want to check out Ohana sometime. The whole thing where they bring your food to you, uh, and you get it, and that you know, they just keep bringing the food. They just keep bringing the food. Here's your appetizers. Here's your entree. There is no menu. That scares some people out there when it says there is no menu. Like, I think it's cool. That's all family style. Yeah, exactly. That's all you can eat, but it's family style too. Right. Yeah. So, um, uh, and it's in the Polynesian, and it's just awesome. So Ohana's is my number one. Hopefully, I will get there next time. So, for our main topic this week, oh, you're in for a real treat. All right. We're going to be finishing up our 1964 World's Fair series with uh, it's still a pretty popular ride today at the Magic Kingdom. It is Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress. Hit the music. So there's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow shining at the end of every day. There's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow just a dream away. Ah, it looks like the Robins are getting ready to celebrate Valentine's Day today. <laughs> what year is it? Oh, right around the turn of the century. It wasn't too long ago we had to carry water from a well. And thanks to progress, we've got a pump right here in the kitchen. Of course, we keep a bucket of water handy to prime it with. Yes, sir. We've got everything we need to make life easier. Oh, we look at that. Now, James, I thought I told you to ask my permission before using my new stereoscope. That's not a toy, you know. Ooh la la. So that's little Egypt doing the hoochie coochie, eh, Dad? Isn't she a knockout? She's the star of the new World's Fair in St. Louis, and <clears throat> now you put that away before your mother finds it. Papa, all these people. I'm, I'm indecent. <laughs> Don't worry, Patricia. They're friends. That's our teenage daughter. She's getting ready to go to a Valentine's dance across town on one of those new horseless trolleys. So there's a great big beautiful tomorrow Shining at the end of every day There's a great big beautiful tomorrow Just a dream away Phew, boy. Hottest Fourth of July we've had in years. Jazz music is the cat's meow. And there's been ads in the paper for months for a movie starring Al Jolson. And he's going to talk and sing. Oh, boy, I've got to see that. <laughs> there goes Schwartz in his Huffmobile. He sure loves that horn. You know, in my new Essex, I've got an electric starter. Now I don't have to crank. You'll blow a fuse. Drat, that's the third one this week. I buy fuses by the case. Uh oh. And I've blown the whole neighborhood again. So there's a great big beautiful tomorrow. Shining at the end of every day. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow. Just a dream away. Well, it 
It's another Halloween here in the fabulous 40s. Everything is better than ever now, and we've got some amazing new wonders around the house to prove it. Our refrigerator holds more food and ice cubes, and thanks to our automatic dishwasher, oh, I don't have to dry the dishes anymore after supper. Give me my let's give it love. The college is really swell. You should give it a try. How do you like that? I always say if you're going to be married, marry a girl with a sense of humor. So there's a great big beautiful tomorrow, shining at the end of every day. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow, just don't dream away. Isn't it a pleasant holiday? Oh, turkey's in the oven, it's peaceful and quiet. Yes! 300 points, my best score yet. Temperature to 375. Temperature increased to 375. <laughs> Temperature increased to 975. Big Wood, overload. Command. John, what's wrong with the oven? What? Uh, uh. Big Wood, complete. Enjoy your meal. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow. Shining at the end of the brought to us from the 1964 World's Fair is Carousel of Progress. It made its debut as part of the General Electric, GE, Pavilion. GE and Disney had a closer partnership leading up to the creation of the carousel. In the late 1950s, Walt Disney had planned to expand Main Street USA with two districts. One was International Street, and the other was Edison Square. Edison Square was to feature a show hosted by an electromechanical man named Wilbert K. Watt. It was to chronicle the evolution of electricity in the home. It would showcase how electrical appliances, specifically GE appliances, have benefited American life from the late 19th century and beyond. After each time period or act, the audience would get up and walk to the next one. However, this idea fell through because the technology to put on the show was not up to Walt Disney's standards and ideas for what he wanted. However, it was always in the back of his mind, and GE still wanted to work with Walt Disney on a project, but they needed a better outlet for their partnership. As the 1964-1965 World's Fair approached, GE talked to Walt Disney to develop a show for the company's pavilion. Disney jumped at the chance to rekindle his relationship with the company. GE would fund the project and new technology that was needed to bring the project to life. Walt Disney went back to his Edison Square concept and once again pitched the idea of a show that highlighted the electrical progression in America's homes. The GE executives loved it. An early script of the show featured the Peabody family that lived in Middleburg, USA. However, a GE executive thought that the family should be from Schenectady, New York, which is the birthplace and at the time of the headquarters of General Electric. The mention of the location was never added to the script. However, in the 1964 version, the mother and father are living in suburbia at Christmas time amidst a snow-covered sea. In the 1967 version, this was changed. However, in the 1994 show, the family can pick up radio signals near Pittsburgh. Many of the appliances feature the GE logo. It can be said that unofficially, they are in the city of Schenectady. While the ride was in the planning phases, Imagineers were hard at work perfecting the audio animatronics technology. It looked at the technology used in Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room and Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln to help make their vision come to life. 
Besides the audio animatronic performers, the team of Imagineers led by Bob Gurr and Roger E. Brogy devised the carousel theater concept. This allowed the audience to stay seated and ride around the stationary set of stages, instead of having to get up and move from scene to scene. This also saved the audience from the time change and disruption of changing seats repeatedly during the show. Disney turned to the Sherman Brothers to pen a song that would serve as a bridge between the acts and the show. He explained what the show was about. The Sherman Brothers used Walt's enthusiasm as their inspiration to write, you know the words, there's a great big beautiful tomorrow. Do you know how hard that was not to sing that? Right. Which they later stated they believed it was Walt's theme song because of his optimism and excitement about the future and technology itself. When the show opened as at the fair as Progress Land, it was one of the most visited pavilions. It had several unique features that made the attraction so popular. One of them was that it was a circle of six theaters connected by dividing walls that revolved clockwise around the fixed stages every four minutes. The load and unload theaters were identical with a wall of light called the kaleidophonic screen. And the performers appeared in the scenes from the 1890s, 1920s, 1940s, and 1960s. Despite the fact that more than 200 people entered and exited the attraction every four minutes, it wasn't unheard of to wait more than an hour in line. At the conclusion of the show, the fairgoers were invited to walk up to the second floor of the pavilion to see the GE Skydome Spectacular, which projected images of nature and energy into the domed roof of the pavilion. The show demonstrated many ways that GE was harnessing electricity and the power of the sun for the benefits of its customers. The Carousel Progress was so popular that it moved to Disneyland's Tomorrowland. It opened on July 2, 1967 with the name Carousel of Progress. It closed on September 9, 1973. As Walt Disney World was opening, General Electric wanted to have a presence in the new park. It was decided to move the Carousel of Progress from Disneyland to Walt Disney World. When it opened in Disney World on January 15, 1975, there were some changes. The final scene was updated. The Sherman Brothers created a theme song called The Best Time of Your Life to reflect a change in General Electric's slogan. However, in March 1985, the GE sponsorship was allowed to lapse. When Tomorrowland was redesigned in 1994, the Carousel of Progress was reverted to its original form, bringing back There's a Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow <laughs> as the attraction song. At the time, the name was officially changed to Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress to emphasize the attraction's direct connection to Walt Disney. It is one of the few attractions that still stand at Disney World that Walt had his hands on personally. Some trivia worth noting about the Carousel of Progress is that when the show was refurbished in 1984, Rex Allen, who was originally the father, now voiced the grandfather. And Janet Waldo, who is the voice of the grandmother, was also the voice of Judy Jetson. Mel Blanc, and this is a, I did not know this, I thought this was cool. Mel Blanc, most known as being the voice of Bugs Bunny, voiced Uncle Orville. And his son is also a voice in the show, too. No privacy around here! Yes, it really is a great big beautiful tomorrow. Uh, Jen, what do you think of the Carousel of Progress? I like it. I know people refer to it as nap time because it's always air conditioned, but I like it. It's it just has that classic feel to it, and it is. It, I'm not gonna lie, it is nice in the summer to get out of the humidity because you know you're gonna be in there for like 20 minutes. So I like it. I know we had fun when we went to Disney World going to see the Carousel of Progress. <laughs> Wes got to experience it in a new way, but I don't know. I just think it's fun because it is that classic ride. I know I go and I usually sit there, and as much as I laugh at some of the audio animatronics they're showing their age, it's kind of cool to kind of picture Walt Disney working on some of those scenes. Like wondering, like, oh, I wonder if maybe he made that adjustment. Uh, I'm a fan of Carousel Progress. Uh, it, it is nice. You can. It's funny because you said about the hour wait, and my face was like, what? <laughs> I can't imagine waiting an hour for that because uh, you, everyone knows who's been on it is you can walk right into it pretty mm -hmm. much at any time. Um, so, so that shows how popular it was back in the day. Um, but that that's one of the cool things, you know, like, I'm always like, oh, I need, I have 30 minutes till Space Mountain or something. Oh, Carousel of Progress. I just, I like, each scene has something that in interests me, um, and it's, it's, yeah, you know, it's got a, 
the characters are fun, even though they're a little, you know, <laughs> you know, old school, shall we say? <laughs> Uh, but that's the point, isn't it? <laughs> um, the videos on YouTube, everyone has to check some of these out. Some, of The one especially, the Stuck in the Carousel of Progress, where they're stuck in the uh, last scene, the Christmas scene, and um, <clears throat> I, you can tell it's like the third or fourth time that they've seen this, and they're like yelling back to the characters. <laughs> And they're like, oh, let's have Grandma try the video game. It's, it's just hysterical. It makes me laugh. I, I, when I see that scene, all I think of is that video and think, please don't get stuck here four times. <laughs> so, but, um, yeah, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good show. Um, if you've never been to Walt Disney World and you're interested in some, like, Walt Disney original attractions, it's Carousel Progress is a must. Um, as I get older, I appreciate it more. When I was a kid, I was just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but I, I, no, I didn't enjoy it as a kid, really. Um, but I I think I went on the first time in like 97 or 98. So um, I, was, I, was, I, was, oh, I was always a fan. I had went on at least once. The last two vacations, I've actually gone on twice. Uh, um, yeah, so it, it's just, uh, it's nice to know you can get on something. <laughs> and it's enjoyable at the same time. I like the, uh, I like when the little kid finds the dirty, uh, <laughs> periscope or whatever it is from the... Oh, so that's little Egypt doing the hoochie-coochie. Yeah, doing the hoochie-coochie. I, mean, I was like, oh, it's a porno. He's like, put that away before your mother finds it. Oh, I like the mother where she's like, you just got it all over my room. Bit. My room. I mean, I made my breakfast room. Yeah, so definitely, <laughs> when, you, when you're in Disney World, be sure to give a little bit of time, 20-some minutes worth, to check in at the Carousel of Progress. It's definitely worth it. Or if you have tired kids that want to rest, go there. Just don't make sure they don't scream during the whole thing. All right, well, that's all the time we've got for this episode. Jen, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you on the interwebs? You can find me at JenMia83 on Twitter. I just want to say hi to Kevin Troop. Yes. And, of course, you can follow our other hitchhiking host, Mandy, at MandyDisney on Twitter and on her Flickr account, Storybook Princess. For me, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes A-List, and you can subscribe to my YouTube, which I will be getting on once again soon, uh, youtube.com slash westside of 515. Our hitchhiking host links, at Hitcho Show, follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Hitcho Show. Follow us on Instagram, at uh, Hitcho Show. <laughs> We're going to have some new pictures up soon. And of course, subscribe right here on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Hitcho Show. Until next time, don't forget to... Hurry back. Hurry back. For another episode. Bye.